The cabins may not be sleek and modern like on my last flight, but for a three-hour regional flight, EVA's 777s certainly hold their own. Hi there, my name is Kevin. This channel came from a love of traveling, a love of the full process and the journey itself. I feature airline trip reports and high-end hotel reviews from all over the world. My reviews aren't sponsored by airlines or hotels, so you can be sure to get my unbiased and honest opinion. Am I an expert? You can decide. Am I fair? Yeah, I am. Let's get into it. Welcome to Taipei. This is the third and final leg of my itinerary from New York to Saigon. The first two were on an Austrian 767 and then an EVA 787. If you'd like to know exactly what I paid for this itinerary or my next five videos in queue, please check out the description below. Taipei's airport has a bit of a strange layout, but it's actually always been one of my favorite places to transit through. It's just easy to navigate and very well signed. Considering EVA, China Airlines, and soon Starlux, are airlines that focus on a lot of transfer traffic, this makes plenty of sense. I did a quick check with the ground staff asking about my bags that Austrian left in New York. They're still there. And that's about it at this point, so I headed to the lounge. EVA's lounges, I've always thought, have never really lived up to their onboard products. Here, they have three lounges grouped together, the Garden, the Infinity, and the Star. Each has their own decoration. The seating areas are all fine, but none of them have apron views and they don't feel particularly spacious. The other problem being the food. It's not that it's bad, but EVA serves incredible food in the air, so the offerings in their lounges just leave a bit to be desired. The past decade has been a bit of a rocky few years for the top of the ladder at EVA, and EVA's drama managed to totally change the face of Taiwanese aviation. In January of 2016, Evergreen Group's chairman, Chang Yung-fa, died, leaving control of the company to his son by his second marriage, Chang Kuo Wei. This wasn't received well, and in March of 2016, a corporate coup by his three children of Chang Yung-fa's first marriage removed the newly appointed chairman and replaced him with Lin Peng Shui. Soon after, Chen Kuo Wei announced that he would start his own airline, and with that, Starlux was born. I very much look forward to hopefully trying Starlux to the US after they get their operations into full swing. Time to head to the gate. No need to adjust your screen, these windows have a very heavy blue tint. EVA is a very unique airline in that nearly 80% of its fleet is wide-body, with 777-300ERs accounting for almost half of their fleet, with 34 in service. Keeping in mind that EVA does work in coordination with other evergreen shipping businesses, it makes sense for the high utilization of 777s even on short routes like to Saigon, because 777s can carry a crap load of cargo even with the full passenger load. The gate area reminded me of waiting for a flight in Miami. Everyone looks to be standing still, but if you took a time lapse, you'd notice that everyone was slowly but surely inching closer and closer and closer, almost as if they were trying to pounce the gate agents as their prey. For today's flight, we took off 16 minutes late and landed 15 minutes late on this three hour journey to the Southwest. By the way, a friendly reminder that not only is this flight 100% self-funded, but EVA had absolutely no idea I'd be on this flight, or who I am for that matter. In a world where content creators are recognized every day, on the street, on flights, anywhere, I still maintain that I think the only way to give a true, unbiased review is to fly anonymously. And so, I really do appreciate every like, comment, subscription, and even a glance at my Patreon as they all really do contribute to growing the channel and keeping this honest content flowing. A big thanks in advance for watching today. 
Boarding began around five minutes late, and off we went. Let me prepare you for the interior of this plane. It gives a whole new meaning to drab. The ironic part is that the seats are in phenomenal condition, but the colors just feel so dated. I call this color palette all of the shades of green that Cathay decided not to use. That said, it is a very comfortable cabin. The 777s feature 39 business class seats in reverse herringbone style, arranged in a one to one pattern spread across two cabins. Avoid row 7 for a missing window, and go for row 8 if you enjoy engine views. Otherwise, there's really not a bad seat on board. As with their 787s, these seats also offer very generous seat measurements in every direction. There's also loads of storage nooks throughout the seating area. These seats are still branded as Royal Laurel Class, which is what they call their business class, but it does feel like they're starting to steer away from these labels. Perhaps even more surprisingly, their new 787s don't feature premium economy either. Considering EVA was the first ever airline to offer it from 1991, that's pretty significant. As I said, the seat itself is in near new condition. To the side, you have the remote for the IFE and all of the controls for your seat. Your armrest can also raise and lower, making it easy to sneak out with your table full of food and there's plenty of room for stretching out your feet. Pre-departure drinks of your choice were offered, along with pre-packaged wet towels and alcohol wipes. Technically speaking, in this format, you can't use your monitors for taxi takeoff and landing, but let's be real, we all know what happens as soon as the flight crew buckles up. We pushed back and had some very beautiful tail views on the way to the runway. Lots of other aircraft here for heavy maintenance, I assume, from Evergreen, including many carriers that don't fly to Taipei, such as Austrian and Air Canada Rouge. We would be taking off to the north. The spool up, takeoff, and airport stats are coming up now.
Amenities at the seat, I suppose, are a little bit limited, but for a short flight, it's more than adequate. These are the same really high quality down pillows that they offer on long haul flights, and the blankets were available by request. And their Thunder headphones are one of the better options in business classes these days. Again, very thankful for the slippers that were open-toed, though, oddly enough, these were nearly exactly the same slippers as on my last flight, except these don't say Jason Wu on them. I suppose pinching a few licensing pennies or something. A decent selection of movies is available, plenty for a short flight like today, and the remote is easy to use and very responsive. Breakfast started with some surprisingly good coffee, a sparkling water, and some crackers. Here's the full menu for today's flight. The red prices on the wines are to give you an idea of the current retail prices for them in USD. Note that the wines on this flight were completely different from my last flight from Vienna, which I think makes sense, but many East Asian carriers maintain the same wine list across regional and long-haul flights. That said, EVA's regional wine list is better than many airlines' long-haul wine list. We started out with a tea smoked duck appetizer. One thing I, I really don't understand about EVA's branding is that they use totally different serveware designs for their 777s compared to their newer 787s. EVA has a version of Book the Cook where you can choose different items not available on board if you book in advance. I went for the braised beef shank, tendon, and tripe in superior soy sauce with thick noodles. If you're ever trying to decide on dishes on EVA, always go for something braised, fish-based, or pork-based. These are consistently considered by me and other frequent flyers to be where EVA catering really does excel. Bathrooms on EVA are always pristine and service in general today was really top-notch, especially for such a quick flight. To feel like you got a full business class experience is quite a treat. Time literally flew by. And here's a look at the seat in full flat mode as we begin to cross over Vietnam Central Highlands. The beautiful views were eventually giving way to smog as we approached Saigon though, and we'd be landing from the east. And this is the first ever right side landing I've ever had on my channel. I must have been tired or something when I booked my seats because there's nothing to see from the right side. I'll note that I put in my baggage claims here for my missing bags. The system did not instill confidence, but I just had to go with it. At this point, it was a third party Airports of Vietnam agent that handles the missing bags until the fifth day when the responsibility transfers to EVA directly. I already knew where my bags were, but the airport staff did call me daily to give me updates if they knew anything. Long story short, they put the bags on different itineraries for some reason, and they arrived to me three and four days after I arrived in Saigon. A quick taxi to the gate and we were set free. Overall, EVA needs to put a bit more attention into their lounge food program, and I'd be elated if they updated their 777 cabins to match the 787s. But otherwise, there's little to fault. It really is a solid regional product. I really do hope that you enjoyed this trip report today. If you did, please subscribe so that you can check out my next video, which will finally be a video from Vietnam, from the absolutely sublime Park Hyatt Saigon to be exact. Thanks again for clicking that thumbs up.